Why, why, why guys, we, we are not making it as a faith? You need dunya? You need a higher salary? I'm telling you from now. You are not happy with the job you have? You have been hearing about thousands and thousands about salaries here and there. And you are looking for dunya to, to obey Allah with. To be closer to Allah with. Just run after akhir. You will see what Allah will bring you into. And by the end, Allah says, you are going to run after dunya. You are going to run after akhirah. You will not get from dunya, but what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did right for you before even you have been created. Let's make it inshallah out of the session. We are going to finish, I think, three, four verses in the chapter of the cave. Inshallah to, to wrap up that theme. Before we are going to start in the great story about Musa and Khidr alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam and Khidr alayhi salam. And how, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has presented the importance of knowledge. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did teach his great messenger, Musa alayhi salam, a lesson. Through somebody who is not even a prophet. He's a knowledgeable guy. He's one of, of the true servants of Allah. And in terms of ranks, prophets are higher than him. And Musa is higher than him. But Allah sent that guy who is lower in rank to teach Musa alayhi salam what he will never learn in his whole life. We're gonna wrap the last few verses before the beginning of the chapter and inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala it will be a part of the inshallah the people of dunya next session inshallah either we're gonna start in, with Musa alayhi salam and the khidr and the stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has given Musa alayhi salam on the hands of khidr we'll see inshallah or we're gonna get back to the syllabus of the day of judgment because I think we need to we need to get more into Jannah. We need to get more into the hellfire. We need to get more into the grave. We need to get more into the last few minutes in our life and how we can be well prepared for. I believe we, we finished like few sessions a few months ago about the signs of Husn al Khatima. Is it correct? The signs of the, the good end. The best end that we are expecting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we'll see inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala how we can achieve it. We are going to talk about the minor signs of the day of judgment. And how almost all of them are there. What we are waiting for. And why the brothers and sisters are asking about the major. Are you asking about the major to learn? Or are you asking about the major to wait for? You missed the whole point. If the angel of death will come... That's your resurrection. There is no need for Yajuj and Majuj to come. There is no need for the anti-Messiah to see you and see him, and he will see you. There is no need. There is no need for you to wait till the sun will come from the west. Once the angel of death will visit your house, it's gone. That's your minor resurrection. What you have been learning as a preparation for that day which we don't know of. No one knows it for any one of us but Allah. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it very clear. If the anti-Messiah... If the anti-Messiah will be coming, and he said, if he will come, and I'm still among you still, I'll take care of him. Don't worry, guys. He will take care of him. And if not, and if he will come after me, every one of you, should take care of himself through the knowledge. Because if you learn the Sunnah of Muhammad, inshallah you are okay. If you learn the chapter of the cave, you are okay from the anti-Messiah. One of you can come here, just come to the other side. Yeah, one will stay here and one will stay there. May Allah bless them, inshallah. If you learn from the chapter of the cave, you are okay. If you learn the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are okay. Because there is no single person <coughs> will be described and you will have the exact features of a person like what Muhammad mentioned about the Dajjal, the anti-Messiah. There, no, there, no, there is no way to have a duplication of the Dajjal. There is no way. The way that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did describe it, any believer who learned the Sunnah will look at him and he will say, You are the anti-Messiah. 
It's written on his forehead. Kafir. Yaqra'uha al-katib wa ghayru al-katib. Everyone will read it, even the illiterate. Even the illiterate. You need just to learn the sunnah. You need to know what Muhammad said about him, and that's it. But if you don't know what Muhammad said, that's the whole problem. And that's the whole reason behind the, the sunnah in that part that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did leave behind. So, no excuse. Don't, you cannot come saying, I got confused. No way you can get confused. About the anti-Messiah, the way that Muhammad did describe it, you cannot. There is no single human being will be with that description in the children of Adam since Adam till the day of judgment but him. So if you know only what Muhammad said, it's enough. That's it. You are done. In addition to the tools that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will give us, in addition to the triggers that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa will support us with, what is telling us that his garden is Allah's fire and his fire is Allah's garden. He's going to bring a fire and your, your eye will see it as fire. If you don't know that Muhammad said his fire, it's going to look to your eye as fire. But once you are in, that's Allah's jinn. You can look at something, it looks like a fire. Once the door is open and you are in, that's the jannah. And his jannah is the fire of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We stop by the verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَقَدْ صَرَّفْنَا فِي هَذَا الْقُرْآنِ لِلنَّاسِ مِنْ كُلِّ مَثَلْ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ سَيْءٍ جَدٍ It's true. We said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set, up, set forth all examples we need in the Qur'an. Guys, to, to make sure, regardless what's your language, regardless what's your nationality, you have to have that faith till you will realize it in the depth of your heart. Nothing has been missed in the book of Allah. Whatever you might think of, anything. And if you are thinking it's missing, it's your deficiency, not the deficiency of the Qur'an. That means you have not learned enough. That, mean, that means you are still ignorant. مَا فَرَّطْنَا فِي الْكِتَابِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ Nothing has been missed in the book of Allah. Nothing. But the disease is, as Allah says at the last of the, at the end of the, the verse we covered last session, وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدَبٍ What we said about, huh? The human being is what? It's too much air. Arguing. And was, I think it was a discussion about, oh, you are going to teach somebody, or you are going to advise him, and he's going to tell you, who are you to advise me? And he's going to start telling you, oh, that's not sahih, that's da'if, that's false hadith. Who is that Bukhari? Bukhari is like us. And, and you are going to get into the whole argument. وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ أَكْثَرَ شَيْءٍ جَدًا And we have agreed on. You are going to advise, you are going to deliver the message based on the true knowledge you have. And whenever you will come to a point, you are stuck. وَإِذَا خَطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ If the ignorance will talk to you, you will say, Salam. Okay guys, peace be upon you. Don't get into more and more. Otherwise, you, Allah will be, it will come to a point, Allah and Muhammad will be insulted and you are a part of the whole group. Is it true? You are getting into a discussion with a brother and by the end he's going to say, See, I'm not going to pray to make you happy. Is it true? You are going to discuss with somebody and it will come to a point you might not, you might have not delivered the message properly or whatever the reason is. Or shaitan is making it fiery for him and by the end he's going to, at the beginning he was just arguing and he's going to end the session with a clear statement of kuf. Have you gone through that before? Many of us. And by the end, see, if you are talking about, I'm not a Muslim. Is it true? I'm not going to pray at all. You will be the one. <laughs> you can get the same argument from wives. You can get the same argument from husbands. You can get the same argument from kids. How many, kids, how many times kids say, Oh, my father, don't worry about me. You, you, you already have delivered the message. I'm going to tell Allah one day that you did. Just let me do whatever I'm, I'm looking for. Is it true? You are telling your wife, fear Allah. Oh, yeah, akhi. Allah just, you made it already. Allah will just, Allah will help me accountable. It doesn't work. That can work with a friend. That can work with a brother. That cannot work with somebody whose responsibility is in my neck. You cannot, if your son will say just like, oh my father, 
Let me do, you, you, you did your job. And just like, let me do whatever I need. It doesn't work. Because your name will still <laughs> carrying my name. With wives, it's gonna come to a point that you are in your way and I'm in my way. Is it true? You are gonna keep advice, keep remind. It will come to a point she wanna continue, nothing come. Oh, just uh, stay in my bed and everything is okay. Let me do my own and do your own. And we're still husband and wife. It doesn't work. That can work with a, with a colleague. It can work with somebody on the street. But it cannot work with somebody. Her trust is in my neck. It will come to a point Allah will say, let her go. And the same for the husband. Let him go. But for kids, it's going to be till death. It's going to be till death. You are going to suffer from or be rewarded for till death. You cannot skip from. It will be based on the effort you have done. By the end, you, you are not the one who is guiding. But you cannot say, I am fed up. You can be fed up with wives and say, go, you are divorced. Fine. Wife can ask for khul'a to be extracted or whatever. That's fed up for that relationship. But with kids, it doesn't work. For kids, you are going to wa'mur ahlaka bussalati wastabir. Keep reminding and instructing your family with salah. And be more and more and wastabir means more and more and more patient. Nothing called with kids fed up. Because by the end, he's going to come in the day of judgment, grabbing you from your neck, and either taking you with him to Jannah or to the hellfire. You, you will go through that argument with many. And as I said, it can be the very close relationship. It can be with your father. Your father is not that good Muslim, and you are going to keep reminding him with the way it should be from a son to a father. Because sometimes we are the one who are wrongdoers. We are the ones who are not advising parents. We are advising parents the same way that we are advising kids. It doesn't work. You cannot go to You can go to, into the room of your son. You will see something bad on the TV. You are going to turn off the TV. It's your responsibility. But you cannot do the same with the parents. You are going to visit your parents. Something is wrong. You can only say nicely. You have no right to do nothing more than that. What Ibrahim salam did teach us. Ya abata. Ya abata, he is kafir. His father is clear kafir. And he never told him, oh, the kafir. Some of the brothers' beards and mashallah, sisters are niqab. And they are thinking with the, beard, with the beard and niqab, it's giving them the right to start appointing fingers to parents. You are kafir and you are in the hellfire and you are in Jannah. Your beard and your niqab will do nothing. Ya abati. إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ See how Ibrahim is reminding his... He's still till the end of the whole discussion in the chapter of Maryam. He never stopped, يَا أَبَتِي يَا أَبَتِي يَا أَبَتِي إِنِّي قَدْ جَاءَنِي مِنَ الْعِلْمِ مَا لَمْ يَأْتِكَ فَاتَّبِعْنِي أَهْدِكَ صُرَاتًا سَوِيًا يَا أَبَتِي And by the end, when, when his father told him, we are talking about kufr, idols. And by the end, his father, Ibrahim, لَإِن لَمْ تَنْتَهِ لَأَرْجُمَنَّكَ If you will not shut up, I'm going to stand you till death. What Ibrahim said. Go, you are in the hellfire. What Ibrahim said. Huh? قَالَ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ سَأَسْتَغْفِرُ لَكَ رَبِّي إِنَّهُ كَانَ بِي حَفِيًّا My father, salam, peace. That's first. More than that, I'm going to ask Allah to forgive you. Although Allah did not accept that part of the forgiveness because we are not allowed to do that. You are not allowed to ask Allah to forgive a kafir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did make it with Ibrahim alayhi salam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for his uncle. مَا كَانَ الْنَبِيُّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ أَنْ يَسْتَغْفِرُوا لِلْمُشْرِكِينَ وَلَوْ كَانُوا أُلِي قُرْبًا It's not for a prophet and the believers to ask Allah to forgive the mushrik, the kafir, even if they are relatives. But Ibrahim said, I'm going to ask Allah to forgive. Nuh alayhi salam asked Allah to forgive his son. And by the end, Allah told him, don't talk to me about that son anymore. إنه, it's, he's not a part of your family anymore. إنه ليس من أهله. إنه ليس من أهله. 